Hi there. In this video, I want to go ahead and implement the Runga Kutta integrator as I've presented in the previous two videos. And the starting point is going to be the single degree of freedom simulator that we coded up three videos ago. Uh, a link will appear above here if you're unsure where to find it. And uh, clicking on that link will take you not only to the video, but in the description of the video will provide a link to the source code on GitHub. So this is the starting point. I'm going to just run it to remind you that what we did is the, we left the code off with a, a harmonic forcing function that was active for the first 15 seconds and then it stopped. And we wanted to run a simulation between zero or from zero to 40 seconds. Let me just run it very quickly. takes a few seconds to run and this is what the response the force and the displacement looks like the force is in green you can see it shuts off after 15 seconds it goes to zero and then some damping is present and the oscillations are brought to to zero all right so the first thing I want to do is using this code I want to refactor it for our purposes and I'm going to start off here I don't like how I treated this function I'm just going to define that as a function up above just to clean up this code a little bit we'll, we'll define f of t and we'll go back to our definition of f we'll put that in here so this was just a force vector a two by one vector uh, that we initialized as zero and then we came up with this little routine as to how to calculate f we'll put this in here whoops and then all we need to do is return f at the end of this so that's great so we can clean this up a little bit and now when we call the function f we need to pass time into it and again here when we're appending it so let's make sure we haven't broken anything run it again real quick what I'm gonna do is actually run it for a slightly bigger time step because this is just gonna be a bit slow but again, just want to show that I haven't broken anything, not yet anyway. And I'm going to change the delta t here, line 21, to 1 one hundredth of a second. Make it 10 times bigger. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is maybe create a function as well, g, just going along with the notation we have in the previous video. And we'll define g. g is a function of y and time, you might recall. Whoops. That's not right. And really, this is g over here. So in terms of the way we wrote up our equations in the previous video, we called all of this g. We can just call it right here. And I'm going to take what I cut out of there, and I'm going to put it here. And it should just return that value. All right, so this shouldn't be creating any problems for you. I just took the function definition for f, and I put it into its, its own function. And then I went ahead and defined a function g just to stick with the, the notation that I've used in the previous video. All right, and then we've called g here. And so just to prove that I haven't broken anything, we'll run it one more time. And it runs much quicker this time because the bigger time steps. Anyway, so we've got this. This is not the ideal problem uh, for showing how accurate the integrator is, but we'll get onto that in a second. So the next step is I'm going to write this up, uh, yet refactor this again. We called this the step in the previous video. So I'm just going to call this RK for step. And it's a function of yt and delta t in general. Right, and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put that all into a function just to clean it up. We're going to define our RK4 step. Uh, I said already it was a function of Y of the time and of delta T. We'll just call it DT since it's cleaner to write up here. And then what happened in this case is... We actually just needed to return GT, I suppose. All 
So y is equal to whatever the previous y is plus the RK4 step. The RK4 step is, I left out the dt here. It would be dt times that. So it's dt times that, which in return returns this, which is exactly what we had before. All right, and just to show you, we haven't broken anything yet. It's still running exactly the same as before. We've just refactored our code a little bit. Um, let me see what else I can clean up down here. Uh, we've still got the energy. This, someone pointed it out in the previous video, is exactly right. I don't need T. I've already got this all in time. So all I have to do is change the T here to time and here to time. Whoops. And then I can actually just delete this line. And then this stays the same. All of this, that can go out. And now we're ready to roll. So what have we done? All I've done is I've refactored the code. We're still using the forward Euler method. And now what I want to do is go and change the code in this RK fourth step to match exactly what I derived in the previous video. And I'm going to replace this return statement with return dt times, now this was what we called the average slope. So this was k1 plus 2 times k2 plus 2 times k3 plus k4. Uh, and this is a small k1, not capital. And then to normalize it, we divided it by 6. And since dt, by the way, is a float, I don't need floats here. It will automatically convert all of these to floats. I think it would do it anyway because I'm using numpy in k1. But that said, all that remains is to calculate k1, 2, 3, and 4. And again, this just goes back to the previous video. So k1, well, k1, we know that. That's just g of yt, right? K2, you'll remember we took half a time step. So let me just write it. So instead of it being G, Y, T, the time step was T plus, oops, we don't need that, T plus 0 0.5 times DT, not times, but plus. Let me spread this out. So I, I added to time half of the time step, and I added to Y plus 0 0.5 times k1 times dt. Uh, let me see if this is neater. Well, I'll just leave it just like that. And you should be able to compare this to the previous video. It's exactly the form I uh, wrote it in. Now, to calculate k3, it's exactly the same as what we did for k2. We moved half a time step. Only this time, we use k2 as the slope instead of k1 as the slope. And then finally, for K4, what we did is, instead of moving half a time step, we moved a full time step. And instead of using K1 or K2, we used K3 as the slope. So for K4, we advance a full time step. And what we add on to Y to our initial state is a full time step multiplied by K3. We then take that, we average it, we put it into this equation below, and that's what we're going to return. And lo and behold, we are done. I'm going to run it just to prove that it runs. And there you go. You've got the same figure as before. Okay. So now, can we actually do a little bit of accurate accuracy testing of this? Here's what I propose. We set the force equal to zero, the external force. Um, we displace the system from rest, so instead of it starting at 0, 0, we take the initial state to be 0, 1, so we've displaced it by 1, and then we let it go. And the last thing I want to do is I want to turn off the damping. And what we want to look at now is what is the accuracy, how much energy, we know what the initial energy should be, it should be a half kx squared, k is 2, times a half is 1, times x squared is 1, so the initial energy should be 1. How close to 1 does the initial energy, or does the energy, the total energy of the system stay when the integrator starts working? So just to run this, 
Notice I've used a time step of 0 0.01, 10 to the minus 2. We know this is fourth order accurate. So for 10 to the minus 2 time step, the accuracy, accuracy should be up to 10 to the minus 8. Now, notice how close that energy remains to 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 decimal places. 0.999, it's accurate to 10 decimal places. And we only used a time step of 1 one hundredth, 10 to the minus 1. If we now went back to the initial problem that we had where we can actually go back to RK1 very simply. Let's just return, instead of this value, this value. One other thing I'm going to do just to speed this up a little bit is calculating the inverse of A every single time G is called is quite a heavy computation. We really only need to calculate the inverse of A once because A is constant. The mass matrix is constant. In the event that it wasn't, then you would have to do it each time. So I'm just going to define something called A underscore inverse. And right here where I calculate A, or right afterwards, I'm going to calculate A inverse, which is equal to the inverse of A. And that way we only have to calculate it one time. Okay. So all I've done, uh, other than that change, is I've now gone back to first order accurate. I've used the same time step. And remember, our work was close to 1 to, to about 10 decimal points. What happens now? Same problem, but just a first order integrator. So two things you notice. First of all, notice how the peaks are growing here. I, a peak should be exactly even. There's no external force. I set this to 1 initially and I let it go. This is happening because we're actually gaining energy. You can see it here. We started off at the top of an energy of 1. And by the time we've done, we've got an energy of 1.47. And you're seeing that our system is accumulating energy. And this goes back to what I said about uh, the Runga Cutter 1 without any damping is actually mildly unstable. So again, notice how long this takes to run. I'm going to run it again. And we, notice, and we notice that the energy is not all that constant, obviously. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it again as a Runga Kutta fourth order. And I'm going to make the delta T one-tenth of a second. So I'm, making, I'm taking a time step that's ten times bigger. This is going to run ten times quicker. But what happens to the accuracy? Notice how quickly that ran, and notice that our accuracy is still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's accurate to five decimal points. It runs extremely quickly because we're taking very big time steps. And look at the peaks. They're boom. They're dead at 1 after all these different uh, cycles. Okay, so I'm going to cut the video at this point. I'm going to leave it there. This code, of course, is available at GitHub. There's a link to it below. Um, but I hope that you have not seen a Runga Kutta implementation that is any easier than what I've just shown you. I've seen some people do it without using NumPy libraries and some very elegant solutions, but I guarantee you, you have never ever seen a Runga Kutta for into implementation that was any easier to do than what I've just presented here. NumPy makes it very easy, it makes it very efficient, and uh, if you just follow the equations from the, uh, the video before, it should be very easy to implement. So you now have this. You can use this in integrator on any of your future projects. That's all I want to say in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found something you, you think is useful. If so, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave us some comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Better still, still why don't you subscribe to our channel and you'll be notified of all future video releases. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon.